Hello YouTube friends. I brought you down to the treehouse because I'm going to do a really thorough clean out of the treehouse today. I'm going to take out all the um, the little carpets, I'm going to bring the bedding in to be washed, all of that because uh, nobody's set foot in this treehouse for the whole of the pandemic year. Uh, this is usually where guests would stay uh, overnight if they wanted to or you know sometimes I'll have an afternoon nap in here. I wasn't doing any of that last year so I want to make this sweep out all the cobwebs give everything a good shake, give a clean. I've got my bucket full of bits of cleaning supplies here. And I want to get this uh, back up and running for my granddaughter, Agnes, because she really likes to come here with grandma and play. So I'm going to put a, a few little toys down here and some books so that when um, Agnes and grandma come to the treehouse, there's a few things that she can uh, play with while we're here. So um, I'm going to make a start. Here we go. I think that's all the I think that's all the bedding taken out and all the little rugs so they're all out there now on the banister of the balcony of the treehouse and so what I've got down here then is some non-slippy mat which I'm going to take up and then I've got my brush I'm going to give the whole thing a good sweep cobwebs like I say and get the whole thing clean <laughs> let's make a start on that then I've stripped all the bed down now. There's the bottom sheet still. I'm going to take these in and wash them. And then the mattress is a duvet with a, not a duvet, a futon with another futon underneath. And, um, which is one futon too many really, isn't it? So I'm just going to, Man, handle this one off for a sec. I don't know quite why, why I'm doing this, but I'm going to take this one off. Stand it up in the corner. It's years since this was done. Because I want to get this red one off here. And put it out on well put it on the floor for now because there we go oh. there's a function of this bed platform that actually lifts up goes back and is a sofa so I'm going to do that so that I can clean more easily. That now means that I can get underneath here. I can get out the, I'll show you. This is um, sort of a non-slip thing that stops the carpets from going all over the place and it hasn't been up from this floor for a long time so it's today's 
for Treehouse's Day for a mega good clear out. So I'll put this back over here. This is where a second person would be useful. It's gonna. If I put that back up there, it makes the bed more comfortable having this second one. But maybe we don't need the first one. Maybe it's time has come. Decisions, I'll make those decisions. Okay, and that might, means now I can get this stuff up, which is sort of like a plasticky film thing. Give that a good shake outside as well. But now I can sweep the floor really, really thoroughly. For the first time in years, I've taken that up and I can sweep underneath it. First of all, though, I'm going to just sweep all the cobwebs off the windows and I'll show you when I've done all of this. I'll show you some of the features of the treehouse that I really like. OK, everything's on the floor now. So this is a hands and knees job now to sweep up all the bits and I can get right under the bed now that I've done that with it. I'll have to manhandle it back again, but that's OK. I'm going to take this thing now and give it a really good shake over the banisters. So I could leave the platform as a sofa because it's actually it's configured for that. But I do like to come down here for a nap sometimes. So I think it'd be quite good if it was set up for napping rather than sitting. You can still sit on it when it's bed. So I'm going to put the both the mattresses back a bit sort of princess in the pea style and make the bed with a while well, wash the bedding. But I'm going to put it back now, which means lifting up this centre leg. This is where two people's handy as well. But I've done it a lot of times. <laughs> OK, and then the centre leg is supporting that and we'll put this back down again. So now I'm going to just put the quilt back on top of here and until all the bedding's clean. In fact, I'd forgotten I have three quilts. What's this one all about? This one's just a, oh, I'd forgotten about this one. Oh, that's pretty, isn't it? OK, let's put all three of them down. Let's put that one down first. It'll be easy enough to take them off when I want to make the bed. Oh, I'd forgotten all about this. What a beautiful pattern. This quilt, I can't even remember what this one looks like. Ah, oh, this is one my mum made, which has lived down here. And it's got very faded in one corner where the sun's been hitting it through the, through the um, window. It's a lovely pinwheel quilt in yellows. Isn't that nice? We'll put that one on as well. We're definitely going Princess in the Pea now. When did she make that? She's got a label in the corner. 1996, <laughs> that one is. OK, that's good. And then this is one that I made a few years ago. Just a terribly simple red and pink and white squares. 
so we'll put this one as well. None of them match or go together, but I don't mind. We'll put that one up this end here. This is just all sorts of scraps of reds and pinks. Isn't it funny when you make a quilt yourself and you look back on it? I recognise all of these fabrics. OK, then, so that's good enough for me. And to take the pillowcases off and wash those. So I'll leave the pillows here. Yeah, they, these all need a good wash. The pillars are fine, though, because this tree house is quite well insulated, so it doesn't get damp at all, not ever. They can just sit there. And then there's a couple of cushions that I've had for hundreds of years. <laughs> not quite, but this is lovely knitted one. I don't even know where I got this from. And it's got some little holes in it. Now, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about why that doesn't fill me with uh, as much dread as it once did in a minute. And this one is, a, again, another one. I have no idea where it came from. It's a sort of satin thing with some stitching. So these things just live down in the treehouse. So they're all going for the wash then. There's another sort of fun thing that I made at the same time as I made this. It's a, these are little triangular pillows. You can see exactly how you make those. You just make a square and instead of sewing it up flat, you sew it up in a triangular way. Those are quite nice, nice little pillows, those. So that lives down here. And then there's a couple of chairs and a little table. So I'll bring those back in now. This is a little kiddie chair this Agnes likes to sit on. This is a very special chair. It was given to me by somebody who I liked very much indeed. And it's, uh, she was a very, very old lady and this is a nursing chair. And when I was pregnant with Martha, she gave me this because she thought I should have a nursing chair to sit and feed the baby. And so it sits in the corner here. Now, jobs then are to wash all the bedding and then come back down and put the bed back together again. And I'm going to wash that one rug. I had an idea that I might bring my spinning wheel down here and some fiber so that if ever I had a spare half hour and I wanted to do some spinning, it would be set up. Now, I can do that in the house. Of course I can, but it always takes half an hour to get everything out, to get it all set up and oiled and all of that. And then I have to put it all away again because there's not enough room for doing all the other things I want to do. But I thought that this could be a little spinning retreat up here. And it's also a really lovely place to come, as I said, to have a, a nap in the afternoon if I feel like it. So I'm going to wash all the bedding then. I'm going to make all the bed back up again. I may bring the spinning wheel and some fibre down here, but I may bring a couple of books and you know, just come down here for a cup of tea and a bit of a break from the busyness that goes on in the house. But I wanted to talk to you about this. Now, I can't even remember which video it was now, but a few videos ago, somebody in the comments said, oh, Kate, have you ever done any weaving? And I thought, oh, yes, I have. A couple of years ago, I went on a weaving course in Edinburgh and I'll leave the uh, description in the description. I'll leave the link to the guy who offers courses because I'm sure he's going to be opening up again soon and being able to have real people in his workshop again. And I made this scarf, which uh, I made to match my lovely coat that I like. And when I got it out to, to talk about it, I noticed that there were holes in it and the moth had been at it. So it was really disappointing. So. In the comments, lots of people gave me ideas about how I could needle felt the holes, which is a good idea, or how I could uh, sew flowers around them and make a feature of them. Uh, all sorts of ideas. Now, 
I thought I'm not going to wear this until I've mended it. And I've never really considered myself somebody who's any good at darning. I, I don't hear the word darning and, and fun in the same sentence. So I was puzzled about what I should do with this. But then a couple of people recommended and I remembered that on the on Fruity Knitting, Knitting's Patreon page, they had featured uh, someone who who is the master at darning, Flora. And she sells little books and PDFs, but she also has a, a little video course. There's a number of different ways that you can find out about Flora's work. And I bought the little tutorials and uh, watched them. And her work is stunning. It's absolutely beautiful. What she, you know, you want to see the darn because it's so pretty when it's finished. So I thought, well, I'm going to have a go and see if I can do this. And so I did. And so the course, the little course that I bought includes uh, threads that get sent through the post and they haven't arrived yet. But that's OK, because I chose to use. Um, I wonder if I can show you. Here we are. I chose to use this. You know how much I love Aurafil thread. I've got this Aurafil thread in a colour that's a lot like one of the colours. And I thought, well, I'll do the mend, but I won't mind that you can see it. So this is not an invisible mend. Uh, it's a it's a toned in mend. Well, you can see it quite clearly from over there. But as I bring it closer to you, you can see then that this is it's my first attempt. So don't judge me too harshly. But I really, really enjoy doing it. And then I found another little hole down here at the edge and I fixed that one as well. I mean, they're not brilliant. They don't bear close examination, but I really enjoyed doing them in a way that I didn't think I would. There's another one. And I chose to use the same colour thread as this wool here. Now, there's one more hole here. So I'm going to sit in the sunshine because what you need is really decent light. There's fantastic light coming in through the window here. And so I'm going to sit here. I brought down with me my scissors needles because you need a blunt ended tapestry needle and that's where these live and I've got my trusty thimble and we're gonna I always say we don't I I'm going to weave this and chat with you in the newly cleaned out treehouse feels great really really great now that needle has a point on it so I don't want that one I want to choose one that's a blunt ended one and I've also realised that I brought all these things down with me, but I didn't bring my glasses. So what I may have to do is pop back down to the house, get my glasses and a cup of tea. I don't know. We'll see how we get along. I think mending, darning, mending, there's a, a, a huge amount of interest I've never been terribly interested in it. But do you know what? Now that I've enjoyed doing this and I never thought I would, there's a couple of jumpers that I've thrown away recently that I really wish I'd kept now because they had um, uh, the cuff was damaged. And, and Flora does this fantastic tutorial on how to mend a cuff. And also my lovely green sweater uh, had everything I own ends up with holes in it. And I'll tell you why it's not. A, it may I think it might be the odd moth from time to time, but it's more the cats, you know, who just got long claws and like to make holes in things. No, guys, I'm going to have to go and get my uh, glasses and a cup of tea. So I'll stop filming and I'll do that right now. I'll be back in a sec. I'll take the washing down and put it in the washing machine, shall I? Yeah, it's a good idea. OK, I've got my water, not a cup of tea and my glasses. So I can do this. Glass is essential. Can't do anything without those these days. So it's quite a big hole. And it's not in this colour, is it? It's in this colour, but never mind. I'm still going to use this same blue. Now, it was a lovely tutorial. Um, the two little videos 
and a PDF and loads of encouraging photographs. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this then. No knot. Tie that off at the end. So today is Friday. I'm making this video for you for Sunday. Um, and tomorrow I'm going to get my hair cut. <laughs> oh, I could hear the collective groan on the lime green sofa. But you know, guys, I have to. It's just too long. And I, I just don't like it when it's when it gets to be this length. So I'll go to see my lovely hairdresser tomorrow and I'll tell her, take as much off as you want. <laughs> she always stops just short of the scalp. <laughs> it's easier for me. I really do like short hair. So that's tomorrow. <laughs> I've got a not all ready, Flora. Never mind, just be patient. It's lovely sitting here, it's so quiet. There we go. I've had a very busy week here at, uh, at the last homely house because Anna and I uh, have been doing some um, reorganising of how things are. She helps me now and uh, a few hours a week and she's much, much better organised than I am. And so I'm taking advantage of her excellent organisational skills and we've had a lovely time doing some reorganising. It has meant though that there's a lot of misplaced things. You know how when you tidy up one place, the stuff you're tidying has got to go somewhere. So it's a little bit like, uh, you know, moving things around here and there. But the best thing about that is that the charity shops are open again now. And so if anybody watched me <laughs> clean out the kitchen shelves and wondered where I was putting everything that I was discarding, they're all in boxes by the back door waiting for the charity shops to be open again. Now, I passed by my favourite one the other day, the Oxfam shop, and the outside of, of the door was piled with uh, people's boxes because everybody in lockdown has been um, tidying up, haven't they? So I thought I'd, I'd give them a break and I wouldn't take them in just yet, but I'll, uh, I'll take them in in a few days' time. And it's all the bits of crockery and um, all the things I had loads of extras of. That when I tidied up those shelves, I know there were a number of people who thought she's just going to put all those back on again when the camera's off. <laughs> and some of them have gone back that I found that I needed, but mostly not. So darning, that's a really, really good thing to do on the lime green sofa, isn't it? Because it's nice and contained, won't take up too much space and is very productive. And now I discover decorative. So how cool is that? If you're new here and you think, what's she going on about the lime green sofa? What is that? It's, it's really the little name for the community that I kind of created out the top of my head. Of all of you guys, all of you people who watch are sitting there on my big sofa that stretches all the way around the world. The way around the world. So I'm waving at the people in New Zealand now who are having autumn and uh, getting ready for uh, the colder weather with, with their winter coming. It's really weird to think that, you know, they'll have snow uh, soon in July. And so they're sitting on the sofa because the sofa goes absolutely everywhere. I had a, a lovely wave from someone in Tasmania. That was nice. Of course, it goes across the Atlantic and oh, hang on. What have I done wrong? Oh, no, there it is. I haven't done anything wrong. It's OK. Goes all the way over the Atlantic to Canada. America and South America, all there. 
uh, all the little islands around the Pacific it goes and then across to, well, everywhere, Australia, New Zealand. And what I mean by that is that, you know, that there's a, co a community feel to the comments, I think. So all the people are on the sofa. Oops, a daisy. Keep getting it wrong. I can't. Can I talk and darn? Seems not. They're all kind of enjoying all the snacks that I send down there. There we go. Oh, just let me open the door. Hello, you. Come on. So this is Sadie. Yes, hello. Come on up. She likes to um, be outside. Come on. No, she doesn't want to sit on my knee. She just wants to scoot around the treehouse. She's, she's more of an outside cat, really. And oh, hello. So she's blipping around under the bed just now. Come up here and say hello. She's put on a lot of weight, this cat. Ow! And she's got very sharp claws. <laughs> okay, if you're going to do that with your claws, you're going to have to go down. <laughs> very sharp claws, Sadie. Now I've lost where I was. There we are. She's going to enjoy messing up all the nice tidying I've just done. You watch it. What's it? Good girl. And knock the camera over. Yes. So before Sadie put in an appearance, I was telling you about the community, the last Tony House community. And so entry to the sofa is quite simple you just have to press the subscribe can't darn and talk can I turns out I can't darn and talk So I'm just going to turn the camera off then and sit here in the sunshine and do a bit of darning. And I'll catch up with you when I've finished. What do you think about that, Sadie? Yeah, she says. Very happy cat. I'll see you at the end of this. Now that it's all lovely and clean, I thought I'd give you a little look around all the little quirky things. These are my Indian block printed fabrics again, made like the uh, curtains in the house, the postage stamp block. And when I decided to do that, I then made the other curtains in slightly different sizes of square. So let's just close this one. So these are Indian block printed fabric again with a, a, a an Indian lining. And these are slightly bigger squares. And then over here, I just move Agnes's chair out of the way. We've got Got bigger squares again. These are a lot like the curtains in my bedroom. I guess that's where I got the idea from because I like those so much. And then all the curtain poles, yeah. just pieces of bamboo that are supported by bent spoons. And so are the shelves. So the spoons are supporting the shelves here. And more spoons here, holding the window curtains in place. And then over here, I made that little sort of collage picture 
and there's one fork there holding up that bamboo and that's my little sunshine there it's just a I can't remember when I made that now but it's just like a a little collage embroidery thing and if we come back here these are scrappy old windows they're not you know it's not the best quality stuff in the treehouse but the views out of the window are pretty now I just want to show you from the balcony here let's just have a look hello you where do you think you're going I've left the gate open so she might be thinking of getting into the garden I'm going to finish that bit of darning and I'll put it on Instagram if it works out any good. I'm sure it will. But for now, what I was trying to say when I couldn't concentrate and darn <laughs> is that if you want to subscribe, click this notification here. If you want to find out what's going on over on Patreon, that'll be here. Lots of extra content over there. I'm going to post a video here which you might enjoy and then down here I'm going to put the playlist to the weaving and so um, you might want to click on that and I'll see you next time I hope that worked